Dr. Andrew Huberman's podcast has amassed millions of loyal listeners that love his practical and protocol-driven advice on how to manage your mental and physical health. The only problem is that the episodes can be upwards of four hours long. Who has time for that? In this video, we'll take 12 hours of his wildly popular mental health series with Stanford graduate psychiatrist, Dr. Paul Conti, and we'll give you the most important and practical information in less than 10 minutes. Dr. Paul Conti, welcome. Thank you. My name's Dr. Cody, and I'm a U.S. Navy trained psychiatrist who has been practicing for over 10 years. I was a founding member of the Stanford Brainstorm Mental Health Innovation Group, and now I specialize in the development of neurotechnologies. I found Dr. Conti's theories to be actually very helpful in my own struggles over the years, so I'm excited to cover them here. Dr. Conti's leading theory is that humans are most able to feel the ideal state of peace, contentment, and delight when they have a strong generative drive towards positive positive aspirational pursuits. They have a sense of empowerment and agency to affect the world around them through positive change and able to express gratitude for doing so. People are able to do this with less effort when they have a well-formed structure and function of self that leads to empowerment and humility. The structure and function of self is the most complex ingredient of Dr. Conti's pillars of mental health and involves the unconscious mind, defense mechanisms, self-awareness, and other qualities. The big question is, how do you look at the structure and function of yourself to optimize your own generative drive? Things that might be roadblocks and prevent you from achieving the optimal state of generative drive comes from a lack of self-awareness that can lead to envy or demoralization that cause you to go astray from the generative drive Drive into aggressive drives or pleasure drives that can cause many manifestations of human life gone awry to include narcissistic war criminals, addiction, and people so depressed that they just can't get out of bed in the morning. Many of the audience said that this was their favorite Huberman episode so far. They listened to it multiple times, and some even said that it saved them from drug relapse or self-harm by showing them how to manage intrusive thoughts. But others complained that there was too much technical jargon with not enough practicality to apply in today's current healthcare system. I personally think that we can make this information even more impactful by applying new technologies that are coming online as we speak. Dr. Huberman identified strongly with the generative drive concept, stating that one of the things that gave him the most satisfaction in life was to learn new things, share the teachings with people on the internet through his podcast, and continually improve his ability to do so. I love the concept of the generative drive. What a power powerful lens to think about and explore the self and where things are working for us and where things are possibly not working for us. He shared that he's been doing weekly talk therapy for the majority of his adult life and that it has helped him reach a level of self-awareness that has allowed him to navigate the complex work life of running academic research labs and eventually starting the Huberman Lab podcast. During the podcast, he shared an example of a common phenotype of lab researchers that often have too much of an aggressive drive that leads to conflict within their own group of researchers or between collaborating groups. You may think of the classic example of a narcissistic leader trying to control every way their group operates, but Dr. Conte's Pillars of Mental Health gives us a much deeper understanding of this. Dr. Conti explained that perhaps the narcissistic scientist was told through various ways by their parents that they were never good enough. As a result, they've developed this aggressive drive towards accomplishment and control that will never satisfy how they feel about themselves to actually reach peace, contentment, and delight. Because in their unconscious mind, they've developed this abrasive character structure with defense mechanisms that seek control or push people away. They have a lot of empowerment and agency, but very little humility and gratitude that keeps them from obtaining peace, contentment, and delight. What they experience instead is intolerable levels of envy of other people and circumstances that leads them to being very unhappy and desperate in their attempts to fill that need. Their generative drive has been hijacked into to an aggressive drive that causes them to cancel meetings, get upset that people don't follow their lead all the time, or leave the specialty entirely because they don't get what they want. This constant aggression is self-destructive and can only be improved by developing more self-awareness into how their unconscious minds are shaping their behavior towards endless strivings that are destructive to themselves or those around them. 
Through the pillars of mental health, we can also see that less than ideal upbringings or trauma in early life can shape the self in certain ways that makes people vulnerable to various addictions. The classic example would be a person who never felt loved by their parents, who develops low empowerment or agency, that finds that they can strongly alter their personal state through artificial means like opioids to create a sense of peace, contentment, and delight. Of course, these feelings are short-lived. As soon as the drug wears off, they're back to dealing with the character structure and sense of self that was not achieving generative drive on its own. And only through self-awareness can they break free of doing this self-destructive behavior over and over and over again. Ultimately, as Dr. Huberman put it, these addictions are a drive for relief from intrusive thoughts and feelings that are intolerable. Much of this, unfortunately, comes from childhood trauma and events and relationships that affect a person's development as an adult. And this, of course, could apply to various chemical drug addictions, but also self-soothing but destructive behaviors like gambling, video games, or social media addictions. From Dr. Conti's work, we can see that people that have less resilient senses of self or low confidence character structures who run into too many obstacles along the way of life develop a sense of learned helplessness that brings their empowerment levels low. This is someone who feels helpless without any agency in the world, and as a result, they become unmotivated, sad and hopeless. They just don't see the point. They don't even want to get out of bed in the morning as a form of melancholic depression. As you can see, this is a pretty amazing framework for understanding a lot of what drives humans towards goals and what makes them ultimately feel satisfied. In this framework that includes these pillars at the deep levels of structure of self, function of self, that you know, um, give rise to empowerment, humility, agency, gratitude, peace, contentment, delight. You, know, if someone should find themselves unmotivated or, or stuck, in other words, what should we all do at that moment? You know, stop and what? Each pillar has five cupboards. Look in all five, and follow the clues that you find there. Now, some of the audience complained that there should have been more explanation of how to actually look at these cupboards themselves. They mentioned that working with a therapist could be helpful, but with the modern healthcare system where some doctors only see their patients for 15 minutes at a time, there's not enough opportunity to develop trust with the therapist to allow the changes to happen. And medications may actually become a distraction or make the self-analysis process more challenging because feelings of low motivation or anxiety may be masked by stimulants, anti-anxiety or antidepressant medications that are like a band-aid over a gaping wound. With external market forces limiting the amount of mental health doctors and the amount of time they can spend with their patients to institute real change, is there really any hope of delivery of a helpful framework like Dr. Conte's Pillars of Mental Health? Dr. Conte seems confident that many people can engage in a level of self-reflection by journaling and self-analysis to achieve significant change. The primary focus for improvement towards generative drive is to develop self-awareness so that you can adjust internal narratives, reduce self-limiting concepts, overcome intrusive thoughts, and be aware of unconscious defense mechanisms that can ruin your relationships. We must be aware that childhood narratives greatly influence our beliefs about ourselves and other people, but that reflective self-scrutiny can uncover embedded beliefs and understanding those beliefs in early narratives leads to self-acceptance and growth and that this can be accelerated or enhanced by work with a well-trained mental health professional. Sometimes medications are needed to lower the temperature of depression or anxiety symptoms as a catalyst to allow that person to fully engage in the talk therapy process. Dr. Huberman shared that he was once prescribed an antidepressant when he was getting too far into aggressive drive in his early career, but ultimately did not need the medication because he was able to make changes to his lifestyle that were more in line with his own personal generative drive. I loved it when Dr. Huberman shared these details because it rang so true with me when I had to decide that becoming a surgeon was ultimately not the lifestyle that I wanted for myself, but I had to have the confidence to pivot instead towards psychiatry and educational media prediction on YouTube. I have a creative personality and I just couldn't ignore that. 
I still think that the issues of underfunded programs and overstretched mental health services cannot be ignored. We cannot magically create an unlimited supply of mental health providers, so there needs to be more tools for people to use at home to further develop self-awareness and understand how to manage their drives. I personally would like to see more attention given to how to best set appropriate goals to harness the generative drive. Dr. Huberman did do another long follow-up episode with more protocols on how to manage your mental health and brain state, and I think we'll find some answers there. So check out this video in which I analyze that part of the podcast series in less than 10 minutes.